guys! Most of you know me as the dog mom, but if you're new here, my name is Caitlin and this is Eliana. Eliana was diagnosed with a mild to moderate hearing loss in both ears. We have done a few videos of this whole process and journey into her diagnosis and getting hearing aids and the overwhelming response has been nothing but supportive, happy, encouraging comments. People that are so excited for Eliana to get hearing aids and to be able to hear as she should. But I kind of wanted to talk today about the surprising, very surprising comments that have come mostly from the deaf community. What, Elbel? I know that these comments don't represent the opinion of all people in the deaf community, but there were enough people that made these sorts of comments that I felt it should be addressed. And just how shocked I was that these comments were being made. Obviously we chose to get Ellie hearing aids. The loss that she has is directly correlated with the speech frequency. So her loss would severely impact her ability to speak once she becomes of speaking age. The decision was made to get her hearing aids so that she would be able to have what she needs to hear and then be able to speak as she should. Right, Elbel? Some of the comments that we've gotten on the past videos that I've made have been that we shouldn't get Eliana hearing aids and, hi, <laughs> do you hear mama? We shouldn't get Eliana hearing aids and God made her the way she is and we should embrace the deaf community, embrace her deafness, submerge ourselves in ASL and let her live her life that way. That was the most surprising comment that we got because what parent wouldn't want their child to hear if that was an option? I know that had she had severe or profound hearing loss, ASL and jumping into the deaf community would be the obvious choice. But given that we have the ability to bring her hearing up to near 100%, why would we not do that? It's very similar to what I would consider, you know, a child with poor eyesight. You would never say, you don't need glasses, just learn how to read braille and embrace being blind. That is just nonsense to me. The fact that the deaf community, it's like they have and when I say they, I again, don't mean all. The overwhelming majority of people have been supportive. But a lot of people in the deaf community, it's like they're very welcoming into the community, but only on their terms. And I am just surprised at how negative a lot of those comments have been. I wear hearing aids, and I have since I was three. My loss, as far as we know, is not related to Eliana's loss. I, I know how this works. I know what's going on. I'm an educated person when it comes to this. And the amount of people that think that we're making the wrong decision for Eliana mm -hmm. is just, it's kind of crazy. Another comment that we got was, well, there were two things. People who were saying, why don't you get her cochlear implants? And the answer to that is her hearing loss is not severe enough for cochlear implants. If her hearing loss progresses, we will definitely look into that, but it's not even an option right now. And then on the flip side of that, the other comment that we received a lot of is, do not get her cochlear implants. You're mutilating her body. Let her choose when she's an adult if that's what she wants to do. The reality is, is if we let her wait until she's an adult to choose, we are making the choice for her. She will already not be able to speak properly and won't have the ability to hear what she needs to hear in order to speak English, that would be making the choice for her. I don't know any parent that would not want to give their child every opportunity to hear or see or taste or any of the senses so that they're able to live a full life. And that's not to say that people who are deaf or in the deaf community don't have a full life. I, even me with hearing loss, I know that I have a full life. I just use what I consider corrective devices to, to improve the quality of my hearing. Again, as of now, her hearing loss is mild to moderate. We plan on sending her to a mainstream school. We're already learning baby signs and we may consider and dive deeper into ASL, but 
the majority of people in mainstream society don't use ASL. Right, Bunny? So we want to give her every opportunity to be able to communicate the way that others do. I have nothing but respect for people who have learned ASL and use that fluently. I think that that's amazing. And I hope that we can give Eliana that as she gets older. We don't plan on it being her first language. Spoken English will be our first priority and our, our first hope for her. <laughs> Is my hand yummy? <laughs> the other thing that I was really surprised about is the amount of people that did not appreciate the use, my use of certain words. I said that Eliana failed her hearing test and people didn't like me using the word fail because they associate that with a disability and the negative connotation. But the reality is, is on her medical paperwork, it states Eliana failed her newborn hearing screen. Therefore, we were referred to a more deeper diagnostic testing where we were able to determine her loss. That's just reality. She failed the test. It it doesn't have to be bad. It just is. And we're okay with that. Some of the other things that people were frustrated with me using were when I say hearing impaired or hearing loss, again, they associate that with a disability or a negative connotation that I should be using the word deaf. Even for me is what I'm hearing. I will always consider myself either hard of hearing or that I have hearing loss. I'm a person with hearing loss. That's what I choose to use and that's what I'll choose to to explain to Eliana as she gets older and can understand. She can then make her own decision as to how she feels she wants to, you know, associate or identify. But the the idea that it's offensive to say that is it's crazy to me. This is what how we choose to refer to it and it doesn't bother me and I'm in the community I'm in this this community of people who have hearing loss so I'm allowed to say that that I need to conform to the deaf standards is it's just not gonna happen and then the other part of that was well why don't why won't you why won't you do that and are you ashamed of your hearing loss and her hearing loss and by no means am I ashamed. I, we're, we have purple hearing aids. We want, we want it to be loud and, and show people that you can live with, with hearing aids and it's just fine. I plan on getting purple hearing aids at my next appointment. I'm super excited to be able to match Eliana. Colors were not available when I was little. And so I always did the, you know, flush nude colored hearing aids, but to be able to show Eliana that I can wear them loud and proud and that she should be loud and proud about it and live transparently and show people that we're going to be just fine. There is zero shame in any of that for people who automatically assume that my inability to just submerge ourselves into the deaf community means that I'm ashamed. That's completely false. It's just not where we are. If her hearing loss gets to be severe and profound and we decide to use cochlear implants, because we will if it gets to that, if cochlear implants will help her be able to hear, we will 100% choose to do so. We will surround ourselves with those in the, in the deaf community. If her ability to go to mainstream school is available, we will choose to do so. I know that I'm going to get a lot more negative comments on this video from people who feel personally attacked. This is just how we choose to to go about our journey with Eliana's diagnosis. I am an educated person. I wear hearing aids. As her mother and father, we have the ability to make these decisions for her. We have a great team of doctors and early intervention specialists that are also part of her care and they give us all of our options, they're very informative, and we trust what they're sharing with us. I know that we share our lives on social media and with that comes all of these comments. That does not give anyone the right to tell us how we should be living or what we should be doing and what's best for Eliana when you guys see very small snippets of our lives and you may not know the whole entire case. You guys haven't seen her hearing test. Yes, I explained, you know, mild to moderate and that her, 
her losses in the speech frequency is you don't know the specifics of it all. So to think that you would be more informed than we are is just really disappointing. We have the ability to make decisions for her and to care for her and to make educated decisions. While we appreciate when a lot of it comes from a good place, some of the comments are not coming from a good place. They are malicious, negative, just sad. I hope that people with differing opinions can realize that this is what's working best for us. I'm so glad that you have found what works for you and your family, but that's not what it's gonna be for us. A huge, huge, huge thank you for the people who are nothing but supportive and encouraging and excited about our journey. Seeing Eliana start to respond to sounds and noises and talking has been so fun. I'll share a few clips of, of her responding to, to sounds. It's been so fun and I'm glad that I get to share that with you guys. I just hope that there's a mutual respect that we are capable of doing what's best for her and we don't need a million people on the internet telling us what we should and shouldn't do. So thanks to those of you who continue to support us and to those who don't, thanks for giving us the motivation to keep sharing loud and proud and living transparently with what works best for us. I forgot about the people who said that Eliana getting hearing aids was abuse and that if it was their child, they would have walked out of the room because of the way the audiologist was putting her hearing aids in. She did a fantastic job and we are more than thrilled and happy with the care that she's providing. <laughs> um, that's just, it's tough to get hearing aids into little baby's ears and you kind of have to do it swift and fast with those first ones. She's been doing this for 20 years. so. We have faith in her ability and we trust her completely. Kane. Last but not least are the people who were mad at us for wearing masks while she was getting her hearing aids put on that we didn't allow her to see our faces once she got them put in so that she could see, you know, our reactions as well as hearing us and knowing where the sounds were coming from. But I don't know if you guys are aware, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Masks are mandated in our state and we weren't allowed to take them off. Even we don't get to make the, the exception that our daughter was getting hearing aids. We follow the rules and it is what it is. I did order some clear masks so that when we're in public going forward, Eliana can see our face, but that's what we had at the time and it's what we had to work with. Good morning, Elbel. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. What was that? What was that? Was that a big noise? Was that the chair scooting out? Hey, you. Ellie. You heard mama. You heard mama. Oh, my heart. Oh. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Hi. Good morning, sweet girl. Good morning. Oh, I just love you so. Oh, you're so close to laughing. You're so close to laughing. Say good morning, world. Good morning, world. Do you want to say hi to Elmo? Oh, you ready? Good night. <gasps> we love Elmo. Do you want to hold Elmo? <sighs> what? Tell me. Tell me. Yay. <laughs> Silly girl. Are you giving Elmo hugs and kisses? 
We won't even acknowledge the people that think it's abuse having our daughter around five dogs. We're a dog family. If you don't like it or don't agree, then I suggest you just don't watch. Eliana's nursery is even dog themed, specifically in honor of Yahtzee, our six month old puppy that died of stage five lymphoma last December. But as you can see, we have all the puppies represented on her walls. The canvas photos were taken by me, but the digital art and the paintings, as well as the rest of the decorations in the room, were all contributed by fans that follow our page. If you made it this far, thanks for being part of our journey and loving our family.